Welcome to another episode of Shiro's Unlimited Podcast. I'm Janie Morris, founder and um, sometimes director of a little bit of fun at Shiro's Unlimited, our global community for women over 50. And I'm delighted that we're kicking off our latest series with a woman here in Australia who many of you have given us feedback on her uh, article and the light that we shone on her in our Shiro's Unlimited magazine back in 2021. She's got a great story. She has uh, co-founded a very interesting business that is doing incredibly well here in Australia. So because of your feedback and because of your queries and you wanted to know more, I couldn't help but kick off our latest series with having her as our very first guest. So Di Gillett is, um, she lives in Melbourne in Australia, in Victoria, in Australia, for all of our international uh, audience. And she's got, look, she's got a really interesting and colourful history. Um, and she has been, she, as I mentioned, she's the co-founder and director of Partner Introductions. Uh, she has had years of experience in executive HR industry as well. She's, uh, look, she's an absolute amazing, incredible, inspirational woman. And so we're going to get to know a little bit more about her. So welcome to Shiro's Unlimited, Di. Thank you, Janie. That sounds um, overwhelmingly grand. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Lovely to see you. Now, Di, uh, obviously I have mentioned uh, the article that we had last year Ooh. where we shone a light on you in regards to your business partner introductions. But before we get into partner, can mm. you can you please fill in the gaps and give our audience a little bit of background on you? On me, to Rebecca. Yeah. So um, a blended a blended career really, um, and I started out from a creative side, which um, may or may not surprise some. So my 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 passion was fashion, and uh, always has been. So that's in the that's in the background, and I studied fashion design. Um, and went on to undertake a cadetship in management with one of the big department stores, which was kind of a foundation for anybody embarking in the retail sector uh, in the day, and um, worked my way up through buying and, and various roles and worked for a couple of renowned uh, fashion brands before being headhunted by a headhunter and becoming a headhunter. Um, so, uh, or, or known to others as the executive search space. So that um, still connected me to, to retail and, and fashion because I, I put a line in the sand and said that's where I was going to focus all my energies, which I did. And it's nearly, um, it's 26, 27 years journey in, uh, in executive search, which has been bringing in all forms of, um, senior executives through from, through to board level um, domestically and internationally into small, medium and, and large size companies. And, and that has kind of been the segue to what we're going to talk about later being, being part in it because that, that expertise underpins how we've, we've built our introduction agency. But come, um, tw well, I was going to say, was COVID the, the um, the turning point, not not necessarily. I've all, I've always said I was going to have three careers, and um, creativity is my bent. So wanting to combine my corporate expertise and blend in some of the the creativity again was the impetus to developing something something new, which we're we're going to talk about today. So I'm, I'm curious when you say that you've always said that you would have three careers. Was that, was that something that you said to yourself when you first started in the workforce or, or did that, how, how did that? That's, that's evolved, that's evolved over time. Um, I think if you, if you get to do what you love, you're, you're particularly fortunate and I'm not sure that everybody gets to say that about their career. So the, the fashion industry um, was, in, was in my blood, absolutely loved it, and, and retailing and, and trading was, was in my blood. 
um, wasn't planning a career change at, at that stage, but culture of the organization changed. And when there's a, when there's a crack and there's an approach, you know, you, you, you take, uh, take note and, and you listen. From there, it has always been planned that I would have a third career. So the transition from, from fashion to corporate was certainly transition one, number one, which came as a surprise. Um, but that return to trying to blend something creative and probably worth, worth noting, I come from a, a family where I had a, a father who um, was a, an entrepreneur in his own way within the agri sector and uh, broke ground in all sorts of diverse aspects of, of farming and, and, and agribusiness, plus a little bit of politics thrown, thrown in behind it. And having my own business was always on the cards. It was just when and how I was going to do that. So I've achieved that both in the executive search world um, and, and now doing this again in, in what I've referenced as my, my third career, which is, blending the, the two bookends of creative fashion and, and corporate and bringing those together now into a, what I call a blended career as a frustrated marketer. I get to do all sorts of things in part of it. And, and I think that that's part of the excitement, isn't it, of actually being mm. a, a lot of, obviously our audience is, is women over 50 worldwide. Mm. And yeah. Quite often we get the feedback or just in general conversations that we have, you know, especially at our events and what have you, is that a lot of a lot of women, especially especially once they're at, at you know, the age of, you know, 50 and over, sometimes shrink back a little bit and and feel that they're not as openly receptive to the future and lots of different, you know, factors come into play. But it, it sounds like because I was going to ask you, you know, where does where does your entrepreneurial passion, you know, drive come from? And and clearly it is it's something that you have grown up with. Yeah. I, and look, if, if I put on my my executive search hat journey, I think um, they're in, in understanding a profile of an individual, you go a long way, long way back in their history. Um, team, teammanship or leadership traits uh, identified, you can see it early back in, into, um, into senior school. Um, you see it through other pursuits in, in their life. And I, you cannot underestimate, and it's and it's interesting because it comes into play in both search and in the consultative um, one-on-ones that we have for partner. Family background is is something you you know you bring bring forward with you in life, and and some and some of that's positive for some, and, and it's not always positive for others. So I appreciate there's there's others who might leave that behind, but if it's been positive and a reinforcement in values and behaviors you you bring it forward with you in in your life and i learned business and i learned more about business around the dinner table than than possibly i learned through through study and then that style of learning i mean i think you there's there's people who learn well formally and there's people who learn well by by osmosis of being surrounded by great people um and i've had the the, the very good fortune of working with some industry leaders in both um, parts of my my career to date, and um, that's that's just been invaluable. So so let's let's talk about partner then. Mm, with love um, to. yeah. <laughs> so so before we get into exactly what partner is and mm. and 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 get right into the nitty gritty of it all. Can you share with with our audience because I love this I love the story how Partner evolved and, and, and was sure. you know created. Sure. Can you can you share with our audience all about that? Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to. So in um, in twenty twenty, which seems such a, um, a a noteworthy year and line in the sand of change for for so many now. Um, a conversation with a very dear friend of, of several decades, um, a, a fabulous businesswoman with so much to offer, 
and um, has built an amazing business in, a, in another industry in her own right. Um, 15 years divorced. And she said to me, you really need to find me a partner. And um, she said, you know, you're great at executive search in finding, finding people. You should do this for, for romance. And I said, you know, back of mind, thought bubble, the third career, and it really sparked. And I said, terrific. Well, I'm, I'm in, but only if you're going to do it with me. And um, that wasn't originally her idea um, in, in putting that on the table, but, but she jumped at it. And then I said, well, we need, we need some more energy behind this. And there was another um, friend of mine who was, was not known to, to Kim, who I've been talking about, um, and who I had worked with in the executive search space for a long time. And we, we put it to her and she's like, I'm in too. So it's three um, really dynamic women. And, and, and my, my throwaway, throwaway line, um, which surprises those who might know me, is I'm the, I'm the meekest of all three. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're, quite a, they're quite a powerhouse in their own right. So, so three, three of us coming together to build this on the basis of a throwaway line, really. I, I, I think it's uh, one of the things when you shared that story with me, you know, mm. uh, personally, ages ago, one of the things that struck me was um, you're, you're all incredibly successful and, and aware in your own right, in your own both personal lives and, and, and business. You're all mm. women, w women over 50. And you've all discussed, you know, one of you had, one of you had a, a personal need that needed addressing and she yeah. knew that she knew that you had the skills to help her out. And then all of a sudden this amazing uh, organization commences. I just think it's a brilliant, you know, like it's. Yeah, it it's and can I say that that brief is still an open brief um, from from uh, from Kim, my my uh, now business business partner. So, um, and in fact, I had the um, I had the joy of of playing out the profile of somebody I've got in mind for her the other day. So, <laughs> I was um, going. I had written that yeah. down a note. Yeah. Uh, ha yeah. Has has all of this uh, has all of this resulted in success for Kim um, on that? So, all right. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> well, well. So, so. Let's talk about partner then, mm. because um, uh, and, and I know you're going to f you, you'll fill in the gaps. It's 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 an Australian uh, currently an yes, Australian probably. currently an Australian organisation member only introduction agency. Yeah. Um, why? Well, we understand the story with Kim, but why now? And mm. and and why the um uh we with partner through the article that we've had with you we understand that the demographic is 40 plus mm, that's right so taking each each of your questions so so the why now um two twofold it it suit it was um at a, at a juncture that suited um myself and and my and as it's turned out my business partners to consider and embrace something new um, that was um, that was part of it but the possibly the the lesser known at the time but but the benefit of hindsight um, 2020 2021 has been um, a litmus test of relationships um, and Take away all the freedoms of, of, of traveling and and being being independent. And if you if you came from Victoria in particular, um, and and then others and then sort of it, it rolled out nationally, um, it found couples spending a lot of time together, um, and that has put stress on relationships. And uh, if you speak to anybody in the in the family law space. Um, it would suggest that the pipeline down track over the next couple of years for partner it might be a richer pipeline, sadly, um, that it's that it's ever been 
that it's ever been before. So that's so that so the timing is appropriate. Um, and then the other thing is benefit of hindsight, Jane. Um, you know, I'm I'm in my late fifties. My business partners are a couple of years older than I am, and there's a degree of of, of wisdom, um, a degree of of learning. I don't I don't believe I would have been ready to um, deliver this type of bespoke um, introduction advice and service fifteen years ago. Um, in the same way as in the search game, being being too young was was not a not a not something that worked uh, to your benefit because it was a world of of suited, grey-haired men who'd been you know MDs and CEOs of companies. So timing's everything, isn't it? Yeah, it, mm. it, it, exactly. And it's and it's interesting. And and you're right. I mean, you know, my my audience know I'm an open book. And, uh, mm. you know, I have my saying personally is that for me, um, mm. you know, COVID uncovered more than a virus in my marriage. <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, my, I might borrow that line. That is, you, that you, you are, brilliant. You yeah. are welcome. It's interesting. Mm. I, um, my good friend, Kathy Lett, the author, she and I were having a mm. chat the other, other day um, uh, off camera. And, uh, and I said that to her, I said, you know, like, that's my new saying. And she said, I'm going to use that in a book. Yeah, <laughs> so well, it is. You can it's all use line. it. You yeah. can all use it. Yeah. Um, uh, however, so, so with Partner then, mm. how, how does, how does it work? And, uh, well, before I ask you that, what would you say is unique about Partner as opposed to other introduction agencies? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, matchmaking's hundreds of years old in, in certain cultures, but, um, and perhaps if I could start by saying there's only a handful of introduction agencies in Australia. Um, it's an incredibly well-established um, industry um, around the world. And if, you look to, if we look to perhaps where there's um, uh, some some easily recognised synergies in in the UK and the US. Um, this is it's it's big business. It's been going for years, and uh, there's lots of players. Um, our approach to um, the market um, that stands us apart domestically, and it and it appears in some of the collaborative discussions we're having globally, um, is that it's born out of the expertise of executive search. So that alignment of fit and what that means comes from a, from a professional background rather than simply saying, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good at, at matching people. Um, so the, the executive search core principles of how that works are the, are the core principles that, that underline our, our business. So for a job, it's probably looking at, at, at cultural fit and skill. Um, in the uh, introduction world, it's, it's values and behaviours um, and alignment of values. That's probably the most important thing. I think that that's a really good point that you brought up as far as the, you know, one of the unique elements of partner being mm. that that you you do have you know the powerhouse behind partner is the fact that you do have the expertise and qualifications mm. from an hr perspective that that flow over because mm. how how many of us have had conversations where we think that we're really good matchmakers you know mm. like like oh, i've just met it's somebody gone. i've just met yeah. somebody who you <laughs> two would be great i'm gonna sit yeah. you come over for dinner and then you know like be, dessert doesn't get served because one or the other just goes oh I've got a headache I've got to go, go so, yeah yeah you know. but I've actually it's in, that's a really interesting point because I've actually got the the opposite story where I I met my husband um at a wedding of one of my best friends and I'd been single for a couple of years prior and 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 various gaps along along a journey of a 25 year friendship but they'd never thought to introduce me to my husband because it never crossed their mind that we might get on. Could have saved a whole lot of money <sighs> and a whole lot of wasted time. And we could have got together 20 years earlier. 
Wow, isn't I've ne I've never heard of the opposite um, mm. of of that. So that's a really I, I bet you're making up for lost time now, though. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so talk us through the matchmaking process of partner then die. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a the um, the business is a membership model, um, and um, we have a a process of establishing whether somebody's right for us and, and and we're right right for them so it's not membership isn't a given um but it is a it, it comes down to um a like a like-mindedness of, of individuals because there's um there is a um a like-mindedness amongst our, our members and that's going to lead to appropriateness in in introductions um and it's also got a cost involved so not everybody's prepared to to outsource this part of their lives and, and pay for that. So that's a, a consideration um, as well. Um, in the early stages, um, there's consultation to establish that suitability for each other. Um, and then before we can actually start to formalize a membership, there's some probity aspects. So um, those things that are lacking in the online world. So. Um, we validate that you are who you say you are and there's some probity checks to make sure that there's a, you know, a, um, a clean record, so to speak, uh, before, before we start. We don't want to be introducing people and, and bringing problems into their world. Um, the, the, the structure and the process of what you've just described, especially for women over 50, mm. um, I think is a vital process because as we said, you know, at the beginning of the program is that so, so many women, um, you know, who, who are finding themselves single, they're widowed or divorced or, you, you know, for, mm. for whatever reason and mm. do, and do want to, find somebody special um mm. the, the 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 fear and the challenges and the stories that we hear in the media of all mm. of the other um dating uh platforms that you can get on to and and what mm. have you can be quite frightening yeah um, and, and, and off putting and perhaps potentially especially for women over 50 stop them from either even taking that step forward and mm. then potentially you know, not having what they really want, which is a partner in life. Would you? Would yeah. you agree? Well, I mean, there's certainly horror stories that have that have been played out. We're not saying that the the online world doesn't doesn't work and isn't isn't right for some. There's there's space for all of us in the in the marketplace. But mm -hmm. um, there is um, there is concerns about the person not being who they purport to be uh, mm. in online. Kim also has um, <laughs> the most uh, fabulous throwaway line of we really need to consult to these men who go online and, and tell them to stop photographing themselves in the loo or in the bathroom or <laughs> with their dirty washing behind them and, and all the rest of it. But as I, as I say to her, those ones are probably genuine because they haven't thought it through. Maybe maybe some of the highly structured ones aren't, aren't photos of the individual after all. But um, safety, safety is a bit of it, but it's it, because women are now, um, you know, there's so many women with fabulous careers like, your, like yourselves, like my, my, my colleagues and, and, and like the amazing um, women that we've had the good fortune of meeting through, through Partenaire. Um, they're starting to think through the same lens as what men might have, have done previously of you know, being con really concerned about asset protection as well. So they don't, they don't want to be putting their, um, their financial efforts at risk um, by exposing themselves to somebody unscrupulous that, uh, that they've met online. It's, um, uh, it, is, it, is, it is a definite danger isn't it? Mm. Especially now, uh, especially since COVID 
as well. It's interesting. My team and I did uh, a little bit of, as we always do um, before I have guests on any of our podcasts. Mm. We always do a little bit of research into the industry that our guests are coming from, mm. and yeah. uh, it's it 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 it's fascinating. Like when you referred to the photographs before, some of the um, uh, one of my team members is actually on a, a particular online dating app. And so um, she was showing me and we were we were going through and uh, it was interesting that age was put there, yet the photograph was clearly taken <laughs> 20, 20 years prior. And 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 you just you, you look at that and you go, is that a real person even? Uh, and and then and then we learned and then and and I'm sharing this for our audience, obviously. So uh, that we, can, we so we can really grasp the uniqueness and the um, uh, the areas that sets partner apart in a fa- mm-hmm. in a really important way from all of these. Some of the um, some of the apps that we were looking through and what have you, there are actually photographs and names and the description of the individuals, both men and women, that were actually well known journalists and celebrities mm-hmm. and what have you. And mm-hmm. what I learned from that, what I what um, my production assistant enlighten me on was that they're actually it's not actually them that these oh, are yeah. um these are um profiles that have been created by other people um oh. that that and, and and the platform doesn't vet it oh. um and and it can be quite dangerous so i think that that's oh. a really critical point for our audience to understand why partner yeah. is oh. set apart from that and why partner clearly offers a really safe but exciting Mm. um platform for the introduction agency um uh you know space congratulations on that thank you then journey the other really big one whether it's whether it's women or all men is is time so we um we speak with um um individuals within the industry around around the world and the and the number one reason that's actually now um surpass the the safety thing is time yes. and I mean you know you 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 wake up with a new year's resolution on the first of January every year and, and you say you're going to do something and um and you know it may be that I'm going to put myself number one in um in in terms of fitness health and and, and finding a partner and um as we sort of get towards the end of January how many of us have lost sight of that because the you know the the cadence of life takes over and, and business and who's the first person who gets put on the back burner as 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 it happened yeah yeah it, so time's a big one it's a biggie it it is indeed um di before we let you go just a couple of mm. things that that we'd like to ask you then so um you have a podcast uh, we've, yes. we, we love the podcast because uh, one of the things that uh, we've enjoyed in, in looking further into uh, yourself and partner, obviously, since the uh, article last year in Shiro's Unlimited magazine, yeah. by, by the way, to all of And thank you for that. <laughs> you are more than welcome. And, and by the way, to, um, to those of uh, you who are listening or viewing this right now, if you haven't already subscribed to that magazine, please go to shirosunlimited.com and subscribe because you can actually get the back copies once you subscribe as well. So the article that Di has got in there is, is sensational. You'll, you'll definitely want to see that. So go to shirosunlimited.com. Um, but the... Um, one of the things that we wanted that I wanted to say to you before we let you go is mm. is that you're so as I mentioned you've got the podcast you're you're actually what we love about partner that we've seen is that and um, would would we would I be correct in saying this Di, that as far as the demographics are concerned it's quite loaded from a female perspective as opposed to a male perspective yeah. are you finding yeah. that yeah, absolutely. So, so, so no surprise. Um, well, I we think it's no surprise, and um, and we talk to anyone around the world. Um, women are um, very comfortable coming coming to to this for for many of the reasons that we've touched on. Um, surprise, surprise. Many of the men think they can do everything for themselves. So, um, uh, the if. Uh, 
if I was, my, my call out to this was, if I was a guy looking for a partner, the, the world of online is, is, is random and, and all of the things we just talked about, the membership pool of women in partner, these guys could only be so lucky. They're, they're amazing. And, and they're not on, most of them are not online somewhere else. So getting that balance and that is the, and we're very um, aware of that. So in um, um, the initial consultation, pre-membership consultation with our members, we are very clear that we will only bring those um, that we've agreed to, to take forward to membership, this is the women um, and the men, um, forward into membership when we truly believe we have the right types of individuals to introduce them to. So we're, we're managing the, the intake um, to to manage that um, balance between males and females, but there's always going to be more more women come to this party. We we know that you know that. Yeah, of so, course, of yeah. course. And I and I think the fact that you've got this new podcast that you've um, mm. now established that's now out uh, yeah. that that addresses things from the male perspective. That's and right. it's yeah. quite, uh, you know we've listened to and you know we do on share all of those podcasts because we think there's a mm -hmm. value, there's a very important space for that to be shared. Um, yeah. And and by the way, to um, to those of you who are joining us today, all of those details include including uh, the Partner podcasts are below where you're watching this or where you're listening to this. And of course, they're also on our website at shirosunlimited.com. But Di, so how are you finding when you're, when you're doing these podcasts that are directed mm. for men, what, what was your intention when you started those? Um, to destigmatize talking about relationships and, and all of the elements that fundamentally women sit down and, and talk about that, that guys don't. So couple, two, two things, Janie, let me wind back. One overtly to um, attract the attention of, of male listeners and um, promote the fact that an introduction agency has, has uh, been established and, and, and it's a marketing tool. Um, and and then in that, careful what you wish for. It, it's becoming a, a beast in its in its own right. Because when we first started this, um, when we approached guys to be on this, they're like, "Oh, I don't want to talk about my personal world. Don't want to talk about relationships. Don't want to talk about dating. I'm doing really well, thank you." And now, as it's as, as it's getting going, we've got um, a schedule out to mid next year of uh, of guests line up and and some of them are noteworthy and some of them are not and we we only ever go by a first name on the podcast in the same way as in um within part and there anonymity and confidentiality cloaks everything that we do another um take from the executive search world and the same in the uh, in the podcast and we had a we had a, a guest on last week who's a renowned uh, medico and, and, and media face, um, who's a AKA, um, people will think they'll recognize the voice and maybe they will, but they won't quite be sure because they don't <laughs> know him by this name, but he does talk about intimacy, sex, all the things that guys, you know, we sit down as women and, and, and discuss all sorts of intimate details. It's not familiar territory for men, particularly in this 50 plus uh, cohort. But uh, between uh, Tracy and, um, and our ambassador, George Danikian, they are breaking down the barriers of these guys and they are opening up to a level which is really surprising <laughs> and delighting us. It's a fantastic podcast series. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I do encourage all of our audience to make sure that you go over to and check out that podcast. Make sure you get it on wherever you get your favourite podcasts. When you get our podcast, actually. Um, exactly. As, as, as well. Di, before I let you go, I can't, um, I can't let you go without asking you the question that I always ask my guests. If you had an eight-year-old die in front of you right now, what advice would you give her? 
um, be fearless, go forward and conquer. Great advice, great advice mm. at any age. Absolutely. Especially for women over 50. Yeah. Di, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure to have you as our very special guest on our new series of Shiro's Unlimited uh, podcast. My pleasure. And yeah. um, so if if anybody wants to contact you to find out more, all the details are uh, where everybody's yep. listening or watching this, but can you just give us uh, your website again? Absolutely. It's www.partners, spelled P-A-R-T-E-N, a-I-R-E dot com dot A-U. And if they go there, they'll be able to learn more and also uh, yeah. contact directly to um, that's to right. explore getting yep. involved, yes? Yep, they'll be able to um, learn about it, see what the, what the uh, two membership types are. They can reach out and, and inquire or pick up the phone and call us um, and they can listen to the podcast as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Di Gallet, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an absolute delight. Congratulations to you thank and you. Um, and uh, your business partners on creating this and bringing this to not just Australia, but uh, internationally. I'm sure it will, uh, it, it will expand. Grow. Yeah, it, we've, got, we've got ambitions. It will indeed. And uh, I'll be in touch with you very sh soon um, <laughs> myself and I will check it. I'll road test it for our audience as well. Yeah, Janie, <laughs> I, have, I have to say we've already done the pre-vet, so, so we know where we stand. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I've got myself in for it now. Zygalette <laughs> from Partner Introductions, um, thank you very much for being a part thank of you. Shiro's thank you, Jenny. podcast. And if you've thank enjoyed you. listening to uh, this podcast today as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you as I do all of our podcasts, then if you haven't already, subscribe so that you never miss an episode. When you do subscribe, it means that every time we do any of our podcasts, you're the first one to receive them we send them to you before they go live in public make sure you also if you have any questions comment below like and share because it's all about sharing and getting the word out because that's what we do at Shiro's Unlimited our global community for women over 50. I'm Janie Morris wherever you are in this amazing beautiful world of ours make sure you have an absolutely fabulous day.